Frank in the mix as well. Talk about how investors should be thinking about the debate we're about to have in this country. Hey, Robert. Yeah, Carl, they are thinking about it. The studies show that markets generally don't rise or fall based only on the capital gains tax rate, but a tax hike, especially a doubling of that top rate that Biden's talking about, could result in a large amount of selling, at least in the short term. Now, his proposal, as Elon just mentioned, would be to raise the top Keynes rate from 23.8 percent to 43.4 percent if you include that Obamacare surtax. That would be the first time that capital is actually taxed higher than ordinary income. So who is most affected? Well, it only applies to a very small slice of people with one million or more in income. So that's about the top 0.3%, around a half million tax filers. But that group gets more than half of their income from capital gains, and capital gains income can be very easily shifted. So the Tax Foundation says that on its own, this capital gains rate hike would actually reduce government revenue by about $123 billion over 10 years as investors sell before the hike, but then they hold on to those assets after the increase. And the top 1% also owns more than half of individually held stocks. So their sales, as we got a taste of yesterday, can have an outsized impact on the market, even though it's a very small group. Now, the combined state and federal taxes would be a record in very high tax tax states. Let's look at California. If you're a wealthy tech founder or executive, and let's say you sell some stock, you would pay a combined rate of 56.7%. In New Jersey, that would be 54.1%. And in New York City, the top combined tax rate on capital gains would be 58.2%. Guys, I was looking at the composition of those half million taxpayers, and about half of them are in four high-tax states, New York, California, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Um, so that's why those very high rates in those high-tax states would be relevant because so many of this group, and it is a small group, would be paying those rates. Guys? Yeah. I mean, Robert, we're so focused on the impact to the markets or maybe perhaps lack of, potentially lack of impact just looking back over history. But I mean, it's also important, maybe more important, arguably, from an economic perspective when you talk about business creation, business investment, um, other means of funding real estate, something I know you cover very closely as well. Uh, I guess what are you hearing from some of your sources in some of these other asset classes in some of these other industries? Yeah, it's such a great point, Morgan, because we, we look at this group and say, well, it's only a small number of rich people affected. And we, we sort of have a mental picture of that group uh, being sort of billionaire rentiers, right? But many of the people who are in that million plus group are only what they call one-time wonders or, or one-hit wonders. So it is people that got a one-time sale of a business that they spent their life building and then they sold, let's say, for $2 million dollars they would now have to pay that capital gains rate. And so a lot of the people in that top group are not recurring high income earners. They're people that have built a business or built a property or owned a very expensive home that when they bought it in 1969 was not that expensive, but now it is and now will pay the tax. So it's, it's a pretty diverse group of people and it would hit business creators, business founders and people who own real estate in high income or high value areas. Wait, Robert, I just want to follow up, although I had a question for Elon as well. But if, but if you're below a million in income in that year, let's say you were going to take a big capital gain, I, I don't quite understand. Is it current income or is it included? In other words, if you were to have that capital gain, is that uh, explain this to me? <laughs> well, it, it's an important question. We haven't gotten real clarity on this from the Biden administration. Elon can talk to this. But as it's written, if you have income of a million or more in that tax year, you pay a capital gains rate on the capital gain okay. of will be 43.4 percent. Right. And so, so, yes, it's not recurring every year. It's in that tax year. If you sell a business, that's then, when you pay Then you're that above rate. the threshold. OK, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't specific exactly. to Elon. What about the political side of this? I mean, uh, you know, we heard from Kevin Brady during your piece, but. Really, it's going to be within the Democrats themselves who have to sort of uh, kind of get this together, isn't it? Uh, given there is some division within the party itself about exactly what uh, where they want to go on taxes. Yeah, and David, I think that your question really brings up a good point, which is a lot of the details here have to be ironed out. You know, sort of different uh, tax 
uh, foundations, tax analysts have modeled this in different ways and come up with different um, estimates of how much this is going to raise. So I think the important thing to pay attention to here is that there are a number of different levers that lawmakers can pull. It is possible that the top income rate uh, goes up to 39.6 percent, but that the capital gains rate goes higher, but maybe not quite that high. It's also possible that they look at what happens to that 3.8 percent uh, Obamacare surcharge. It's likely to stay in place, but maybe that comes up for discussion as well. So these are all sort of moving parts that lawmakers are going to have to add together because the ultimate goal here is not just to make the tax code fairer, though obviously they will say that is an important philosophical goal, but they also have to pay for their spending plan. So the size of the spending plan, how much of it they want to offset and pay for, how much they're willing to add to the deficit, all of those are going to be important considerations in where the numbers finally land. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.